Hello students, I am Dr. Navneet Kaur, Associate Professor in EC Department of Sagar Institute of Research and Technology College, Bhopal. Today I'll be taking lecture on subject digital communication. The topic of my lecture is digital modulation techniques. Now what is digital modulation? In digital modulation, the message signal is superimposed on a high frequency carrier signal for transmission. The baseband signal, which is also called message signal, have large power at low frequencies. So they can be easily transmitted over pair of wires or coaxial cables. But it is not possible to transmit the message signal, which is of low frequency over radio links or satellites because in that case, larger antennas would be required. Hence, the spectrum of the message signal should be shifted to higher frequencies. And this is achieved by using the high frequency sinusoidal carrier. This is called digital carrier modulation or also called digital passband communication. Now here we can see passband transmission model using a block diagram. Here we have a message source which transmits the message signal. Then we have encoder which changes this analog message signal into a form of bits which is digital representation. Then we will use the digital message for transmission and here we will use modulator which will have high frequency carrier signal. Now this message signal is superimposed on this carrier signal and will be transmitted over the channel. Now, at the receiver end, we will have detector, which will recover the message signal from the modulated signal. And then we will have signal detector, which will convert the digital message signal into the analog message signal, and then it will be transmitted to the destination. Now, in digital modulation, we have two types of methods, coherent technique and non-coherent technique. The techniques which employ coherent detection, here the local oscillator generated at the receiver is phase locked with the carrier at the transmitter. Thus, the detection is done by correlating received signal and locally generated carrier. It is also called synchronous detection method. Whereas in non-coherent technique, the detection process does not need receiver carrier to be face locked with the transmitted carrier. The advantage of non-coherent technique that here the receiver system becomes very simple, but the disadvantage is that error probability increases. Now there are two types of digital modulation schemes. First is binary scheme and second one is MRE scheme. In binary scheme, the message signal consists of only one bit, either one or zero. That means we send any one of the two possible signal during each signaling interval, which is of duration of one bit period, TB. The examples of binary schemes are BASK, BFSK, and BPSK. Whereas in MRE schemes, we can send any of the M possible signals. Here, each signal will consist of n bits. So there will be total m signals where each signal will consist of capital N bits. The example of MRE scheme is MREPSK, MREFSK, QPSK, QASK, and so on. MRE schemes uses less bandwidth as compared to the binary scheme, but the probability of error of MRE schemes is more as compared to the binary schemes. Now, first we will consider binary schemes. In the binary schemes are categorized into three methods, amplitude shifting, <coughs> phase shifting, and frequency shifting. First we will see amplitude shifting. Amplitude shifting is a form of modulation technique in which the amplitude of the analog sinusoidal carrier signal is varied to represent the input binary data. 
whereas the frequency and phase of the carrier signal does not change. Any modulated signal has a high frequency carrier. The binary signal when ASK modulated gives a zero value for low input, whereas it gives the carrier output for high input. Here, say we have a carrier signal which is represented by sine 2 pi FCT, where FC is the carrier frequency in Hertz. Now, according to the definition of the ASK modulated signal, we will have VMT sine 2 pi FCT, where VMT is the message signal. So, when message signal is high, that is 1, then ASK modulated signal will be represented by sine 2 pi FCT. That means it is a sinusoid of frequency FC, which is a carrier frequency. Whereas when message signal will be 0, then ASK signal will be 0. That means there will be 0 level when the message bit is 0. Now, we can show amplitude shifting technique with the help of the waveforms. This is the message signal. 1 is represented by high level and 0 is represented by the negative level. Now, carrier signal is a high frequency sinusoid where it is having frequency FC. Now, in ASK waveform, we can see when the message is 1, the ASK signal is represented by a carrier signal. Whereas when message is 0, the ASK signal is represented by the 0 voltage level. Again, when the message is 1, it is represented by the carrier signal, then for zero, it will have zero voltage level. Now, after ASK, now we will consider PSK technique, which is phase shift keying. It is also known as binary phase shift keying technique because it is binary modulation scheme. PSK is a form of digital modulation in which the phase of the sinusoidal carrier signal is varied to represent the input digital data. Here, the amplitude and the frequency of the modulated signal remains constant. In BPSK, the phase of the sinusoidal carrier signal is changed by 180 degree, corresponding to two different voltage levels of binary modulated signal. Now here, we will see the method of BPSK with the help of expressions. Here we have carrier signal, which is having amplitude A and carrier frequencies F0. Now this amplitude A can be represented in the form of the power of the signal. Since average power is represented by amplitude square by 2, so amplitude will be given by root 2P. So here we can substitute root 2p in case of the amplitude of the carrier signal. Now, according to BPSK, when the symbol is changed, then the phase of the carrier will be changed by 180 degree. So when the symbol is 1, carrier signal will be transmitted at, as it is. So the modulated signal S1t will be given by the carrier signal. A, we have already shown it is given by root 2p cos 2 pi f naught t. Whereas when the symbol changes to 0, there will be phase shift of pi degrees. So here we will have shift of 180 degree. Now we know cos pi, theta plus pi is minus cos theta. So it will be minus root 2p cos 2 pi f naught t. So generally we can define BPSK signal as Bt root 2p cos 2 pi f naught t. That means Bt is the message signal. When message signal is plus 1, then we have root 2p cos 2 pi f naught t, which is given by S1t. Whereas when message is 0, Bt is the bipolar representation of the message signal, which is minus 1 when binary 0 is there. So it will be minus root 2p cos 2 pi f naught t, which is same as the carrier modulated signal S2t. Now, here we can see BPSK by using waveforms. Here we have binary sequence 1, which consists of 1 and 0. 1 is represented by high voltage level and 0 by 0 voltage level. First, we will change this binary sequence in the form of non-return to 0 bipolar signal BT. 
where one is represented by positive voltage level and zero is represented by negative voltage level. As we have already discussed that when the message signal is one, then there is the carrier signal as it is. But when the message signal changes, there will be phase shift of 180 degree. So here we can see the phase shift of 180 degree. Again, when there is change in the message signal from minus one to plus one, again, there will be phase shift of 180 degree. So whenever the message signal changes, there will be phase shift of 180 degree in the modulated signal. Now here we can see generation of the BPSK signal. We have binary data sequence. First, we will change this binary data sequence into bipolar NRZ signal by using encoder. So it will be converted into BT. Now BT will be combined with the carrier signal by using balanced modulator and we will get the BPSK signal. Now, after the BPSK modulated signal is transmitted, it will be received at the BPSK receiver. Now, this is the block diagram for BPSK receiver. This, the detection method for BPSK signal is known as synchronous demodulation method. In, in synchronous demodulation method, the synchronized carrier is generated at the receiver end and the incoming modulated signal is multiplied by the synchronized carrier. Now, to generate this synchronized carrier, the carrier recovery circuit is used here. The carrier recovery circuit, it consists of three blocks. First is square law device, then bandpass filter, and then frequency divider. Now, we will in our next slides, we will consider the signal which is received after square law device, bandpass filter, and frequency divider. Now here we have BPSK signal, which is cos 2 pi F naught T plus theta. Now when we will give this signal to square law device, it will square the incoming signal. So signal will be cos squared 2 pi F naught T plus theta at the output of the square law device. Now this signal will be given to the bandpass filter. Now when this signal is given to the bandpass filter, for that, we will consider the signal cos square 2 pi F naught T plus theta. Now, cos square theta is, can be written as 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2. Now, here we have two components. First is the DC component and second is the carrier signal, which is at frequency 2 F naught. Now, it will be given to bandpass filter, which selects the frequencies which are located at 2 F naught. Here we can see in block diagram, this bandpass filter will select only the signal which is located at 2F0. So among these two components, the DC component will be rejected and the second component will be selected. Now, <clears throat> the bandpass filter output will have cos 2, 2 pi F0 T plus theta as its output. Now, again, we will have frequency divider. Frequency divider, it actually consists of flip-flop, which will divide the frequency of the incoming signal by two. Now, when we'll give this signal into frequency divider, we will get the signal cos 2 pi F naught T plus theta, since it has divided the frequency of the carrier signal by two. Now, here we have generated the synchronized carrier, which was used at the transmitter size. Now, we will use the synchronous demodulation. Now, here in block diagram, this synchronized carrier will be multiplied by the incoming BPSK signal. Now, when this incoming BPSK signal will be multiplied by the synchronized carrier, the output will be BT root 2 P cos square 2 pi F naught T plus theta. Now, this signal will be given to the integrator and dump receiver. Now, integrator and dump receiver will consist of this integrator and two switches S1 and S2. These two switches will act according to the bit synchronizer. Now, in here, S1 closes after each bit period TV. 
Now, when S1 closes, it will dump the previous voltage which was accumulated at the integrator. Now, before this S1 closes, the output at the integrator will be given to the destination for that switch S2 will close. Now, when switch S2 will close, the output which was accumulated at the output will be given to the output destination, which was S0 KTV. Now, here in this way, the integrator and dump receiver works. So, integrator will sum up the signal for one bit period then it will transmit this signal to the destination and after that it will dump this signal and it will start with the next bit period that is why it is called integrator and dump receiver now here we will see the output which will be received at the output of the integrator and dump receiver now here this signal can be written as bt root 2 p half cos square theta can be written as 1 plus cos 2 theta. Now, when we will use bit synchronizer and integrator, the bit synchronizer and integrator will sum up the signal for one bit period, say for k minus 1 tb to ktb. Now, when we do the integration, we will get this signal as the sum of the two integration. Now, the second integration will give zero because the average value of sine waveform is zero. Now, we will get only the first integral. And we will, when we will solve this first integral, we will get the signal as BKTB root P by 2 TB. Now, here we can see P is the power of the signal, which is constant. TB is the bit period, which is again constant. So here we can see that the output is proportional to only BKTB, which is the message signal. So depending upon the value of PKTB, the output S0 KTB is generated in the receiver and the message signal which was transmitted on the transmitter side will be decided. Now this is all for today's lecture. Thank you.